guys, so in this video, I'm going to show you how I edit this photo in post-production. So a stager sent this to me. She was kind enough to let me use some of her portfolio photos as a demo to highlight kind of some of the common things I see all the time when people shoot their own portfolio photos. And what are some of the small tweaks you can do to really enhance it? Just like we staging our client's house, we will tell them to change out switch plates if they look really outdated or damaged or dirty or their hardware, you know, is really outdated data screams the 80s for example those are kind of little details that we ask our homeowners to change and it's the same thing with your staging as well these little details really may help to enhance your overall look and feel as a professional home stager so i think it's really important to make these little tweaks to make your portfolio photos look more refined and more professional as well so let's get started so i usually use my walk home tablet as you can see on the video it looks like this i just have a small travel one there's people who use bigger ones but you can just use your desktop mouse whatever um, you use normally to work i usually do edits on my laptop and so i'll just use the trackpad as well but it's up to you with the walk home you have a pen like a stylus when i do high level of editing in photoshop i definitely will use my tablet but in general i just like to hold it i think i don't know it feels like a pen it's much easier most of the time I actually use my laptop, the trackpad that comes with it. But in Photoshop, definitely if I need to do more fine tune kind of things. So anyway, so this is a really common scenario I see all the time where the photos are crooked. So it feels like you're on a Titanic or on a boat. One of the things I think is really important when it comes to portfolio photo is that it needs to be aesthetically pleasing. Okay. So to attract clients to visit our portfolio website, to attract clients to tap like on our Instagram or to collect our photos on Pinterest, the photo needs to be aesthetically pleasing. And so the lighting needs to look good. The composition needs to look really tight. And in this particular case, because the photo is crooked, it might look a little bit amateurish, even though you're not an amateur stager. When we do post edits of our photo, we make it more refined. And so it looks more like a professional presentation. It reflects how we are as home stagers as well. I do see a lot of times when people post photos online, I can tell that they're great stagers by what they're doing with colors and composition and all this stuff, but their photos are selling them short. And we don't want that for you guys. And this is why we're doing this video. All right, so the first thing I get into Lightroom, this is my Lightroom dashboard. And I also want to say, even though we're using Lightroom, you can basically use anything on your phone apps. There's so many phone apps nowadays just on your phone. You can just drag and drop it. It's really easy. So if you know how to use Lightroom, you can basically use the apps and actually vice versa as well. But it's a lot of selections you see on the right hand side, you know, like color temperature, white balance, exposure, highlight and stuff, tone curve. You have all this stuff in your apps nowadays, like Visco, VSCO or Snapseed. They all have these selections. You just use whatever app it's that works for you to start practicing. The key point is you start practicing. And then the more you do it, the easier it's going to get. So the first thing I always do is I will scroll down my panels on the right hand side and I'll go down to lens correction. This is, is always the first thing I edit because it, it will change your whole photo. It's also how I was trained professionally as well as a professional photographer. So the first thing I'll do is remove chromatic aberration. So what that really means is that when the light comes through the lens, so when you're shooting from a camera lens, there's many different glass in between to comprise that lens. When the light passes through it, it will go through reflection and refraction. And so that might cause these little dots that looks like rainbow colors on your photograph. You don't see it as much in interior photography, but if you shoot studio photography, you will see that more often. But in general, it's just a good practice to remove it. And it's also one click in your Lightroom, so I always do it. And the other thing I always do is enable profile correction. So what that means, it improves the distortion that is caused by your camera lens. So no matter what brand of camera lens you're using, even though it's like a cheapy one that you just bought on Amazon or a really nice one from Canon that's like $5,000. No matter which one you use, every camera lens will have some sort of distortion. Even if you're using like a 50 millimeter lens, which is considered a normal lens on a DSLR, this is what we call normal lens. It's basically the lens that is closest to the human eye. Even if we're using that, there's still going to be a little bit of distortion, not as much as a wide angle lens, for example, which I'm going to talk in another video below. When you're looking at lens profile, 
that's kind of the magical thing. So when you load your photo in, it automatically tells you what camera is shot with. So I use a Canon uh, DSLR, for example. So it's going to show the make is Canon, the model is uh, Mark IV, and then profile is going to be my lens profile. Like I use a 50 millimeter Sigma lens or whatever it is that I used. So I'm just going to click on and off. So as you can see, there's a tiny bit of difference. I do think that the Apple lens on the lens correction in Lightroom is fairly new. So I think it's still not perfect yet because when I do it from my DSLR lenses, that you can really tell the difference. But in this case, it's not as much. But also the other thing, people always think that, oh, if I just put my photos through Lightroom or Photoshop, it will fix everything. That is not necessarily true. A lot of times, I'm going to show that in the wide angle photograph in the later video, which is would be this photo I'm editing. So things like this, it's not perfect. Like there's things we just cannot correct. You have to take the photo correctly in the first place. For example, like exposure, like this, for example, where the camera sensor didn't register any information that is impossible to bring back because the camera didn't get that information to begin with. So it's really important to just capture the photo as close to as what you want in the very beginning. All right. So now we've done the lens profile correction. Let's go down. So the next thing I usually do is I would rotate it to make sure that the photo is straight. So as you can see, there's many different lines. So we got vertical lines and horizontal lines, many different lines. I'm just going to try to get it as straight as possible. So I usually pick like the two most important lines in the composition to make sure that it's as straight as I can be. So in this case, I'm looking at the bookshelf to make sure they're as level as they can be. But in this case, as you can see, it's not perfect because even though I got this one line level, this line is not straight. So there's a lot of things that we need to fix. And as you can see, when I was tweaking it, now there's this new border. That's where my photograph is now. And then these extra bits is going to get caught off in the cropping. So this is also why when you're shooting photograph, you want to pull back just a tiny bit so you get a larger frame than you intend it to. So in case when you're doing tweaks like this, even if you lose the margin, it still doesn't impact your hero shot. So let's hit OK for now. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to go to transform panel. So I want to show you how I would normally do it if I were to do this manually. So I would, for example, do vertical. So as you can see, this is very dramatic. But yeah, so like vertical, I would adjust it a bit to, to see if I can get a vertical line straight. In this case, not really, but I'm going to try to get it as straight as I can. In this case, I'm assuming the cabinet is straight, but maybe the wall isn't straight. You never know. And then I want to do horizontal as well. Although the horizontal, I try to get as straight as I can already. And then these things like rotate, it's very self-explanatory. Aspect, it's just like basically stretching it. But in interior, I totally would not do that because I want it to be as close as possible to the original. Same thing with scale. You can make the photo bigger or smaller and then crop it accordingly. You can also offset it by pushing it to the left or right or Y offset, which is vertical, like up and down. Those we don't really use very often, but the most things I use is virtually vertical and horizontal. And you can use the automatic one as well. You can use auto and see how that pans out. So that actually looks pretty good. You can use full, for example, as well. Vertical is basically, it just aligns all the vertical lines in the photograph, or you can use level as well. But in this case, you can see with the level, it doesn't look as good. So maybe vertical is a bit better. You can also use guided. So in this case, they revert back to the original photograph. So what you do is you create two guidelines within the photos. So in this scenario, I'm assuming the cabinet is straight to create my guideline with. And in reality, maybe the cabinet is not straight. We don't know, but we assume usually is. But so it's using these two guidelines I've set to realign the photograph. And as you can see, the result is not great. So I'm just going to revert back to the auto because I thought the auto looks pretty good already. And then maybe I'll rotate it slide a slight bit just to check. 
I think that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. And the other thing I'll do next then is to crop the photo. So as you can see, like the computer is letting me crop it however I want, but you can actually lock the ratio. So you can choose original, you can choose a shot. You can choose custom as well. You can make it square if you're using it for Instagram. I usually just keep it as the original one that was shot. And then you can just unlock it or lock it on this right hand side. In this case, I locked it. So the ratio will stay no matter how I want it, unless I want it horizontally. But in this case, I want to keep it as a vertical photograph. So one of the thing I think with this photograph now, because as you can see, the original photograph was already pretty tight. So when I did the adjustment, when I make the line straight, it cut off the top. So then the bottom has too much space. So I want to cut, I want to crop it in a little bit. Also, I don't like this. This line here is not straight on the wall because this was, it was not like a direct straight on shot. So I don't really like that as well. So my, I might just tweak it a tiny bit more to make sure I feel like it looks as straight as it can be. And then maybe I'll crop it in a tiny bit more. And that's it. That's just my tiny little tweak. And next thing I want to tweak is white balance because this photo looks really yellow. As you can see with the lighting quality, so if you're using overhead light, so now uh, I'm recording this video, it's five o'clock now, the sun has already gone down. And so I'm using my overhead light in my living room and you can see there's like a yellow tint on my face. This is why most of the time when you look at high-end interior magazines, they never turn the lights on is because it impacts the white balance within the photograph. So in this particular case, it's very yellowish. So you can use here in Lightroom, you can tweak that so you can do auto. So immediately it's a little bit bluer, so it's less yellow, or you can use custom, which means you adjust it on your own. So I'm going to tweak it a tiny bit more. That's too green. That's too pink, right? So I just want to play with the slider a little bit. And that looks pretty good. And maybe tweak the exposure a little bit as well. So some people really like it contrasty. I'm actually okay on that. The highlight actually looks pretty good, so I'm not going to tweak that. I always like to do a little bit clarity. So my teacher was like, clarity is a little bit like MSG. It's good to do a little bit, but not too much. Essentially it's boosting the micro contrast in the photograph. So it feels a little bit more three dimensional, but it's not necessary and definitely don't do a whole lot. Usually we do it below 15, it's good, but some people do go crazy. So that looks pretty good to me. And the great thing about Lightroom is that it's not destructive when you're making corrections on it. Whereas if you load it into Photoshop, it definitely would impact that photograph forever. So once you save in Photoshop, that is a correction you have to live with forever. Whereas in Lightroom, you don't have to. You can come down to this button called reset on the lower right hand side. So I'm gonna click it right now and you will see the original. And then I just do command Z, which is undo. It will go back to my correction again. So that looks pretty good to me. I might just crop it a little bit more, a tiny bit more. And then the other thing too, is that I might find this element distracting. Um, then I might want to take it out in post-production, but that is basically a personal preference, but you will do that from here in the clone stamp area. So if you go up here to spot removal, you click on it here, you can adjust the size of the brush. So now I'm on the screen you can see the size of my brush changing and then just draw over the place so it shows you the original spot and then also where it's drawing the color from and here obviously the color is wrong so i want to change that and then draw again and then it's not perfect but you can like Basically, you get an idea. You can, you can see that element is gone. So it's up to you. So this is how we remove when you have plugs and stuff. This is how we remove it in post-production. As you can tell, I didn't do this very perfectly. 
but you can definitely do a little bit better job than I do once you get a little bit more practice. Usually for clone stem and healing stem, I usually use Photoshop to do a little bit better job than that. In this case, I'll just remove it. Because it can be an architecture detail as well. It's up to you how you want to do it. Because ultimately, it's your portfolio photo, so you have to decide what are some of the distracting elements in your photograph that you want to remove. But this is just a quick demo to show you kind of the power of what you can do. So again, here's the before, and then here's the after. So immediately you can see the difference, and this will look much better on something like Instagram. It just looks more polished as well. So hopefully that helps. Definitely leave a comment below and let me know what you think.